What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Stephanie, and in today's episode of Sex Smart, we are gonna be talking all about urinary tract infections, or UTIs. I'm sure a lot of y'all have dealt with this before. It is the second most common infection to occur in the human body, so we're gonna be talking about symptoms, causes, treatment, and prevention. I have a lot of really great information here, especially when it comes to treatment. So, before we get into it, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe below, come join the sisterhood, no matter your true pronoun or gender identity, come join the family. All right, let's get started. Okay, so really quickly, let's go over what exactly is a UTI. A urinary tract infection is an infection in any part of the urinary system. So that is your urethra, bladder, kidneys, and ureters. Most infections happen in the lower urinary tract, so that's the urethra and the bladder. If left untreated, an infection can travel to the kidneys, which Almost happened to me one time. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but it was extremely painful and it is actually very rare for an infection to happen in the ureters. Like I said before, this is an extremely common infection. I saw a little bit of variety online in terms of statistics, but from what I found, at least 50% of women do get UTI in their lifetime and many of those women have repeat infections. This can happen in men as well, but it is much more common in women. So with all that said, Let's get into some symptoms. Putting this video together has really made me think about every time I've gotten a UTI. And you know, once it happens to you one time, the moment you have another UTI, you know. It's like, I get this dread and this sinking feeling in my chest, like, oh no, here we go again. So here are some symptoms of a UTI. A burning sensation when you urinate, frequent or urgent need to urinate, even if nothing comes out a pressure or pain in your lower abdomen or back, cloudy, dark, bloody, and really strong smelling urine, um, feeling tired and shaky. And then this one is a sign that the infection has started to spread to the kidneys is fever and chills. My very worst UTI happened when I was 18 years old. I was studying abroad in Florence, Italy, and I was just not educated on UTIs at all. It had been going on for a couple days and I just really didn't wanna to go to the doctor because going to the doctor as an American was just very expensive, at least at that time when I was studying there. So instead what I did is I just went to a pharmacy. Maybe there was some communication issues. I really don't think so though because I translated it really exactly and really well and it seemed like the person understood and you know, Women all over the world get UTIs, so I'm not really sure why this person just gave me what he did, but he just gave me like some herbal supplements. And it was like, I remember a week and a half or almost two weeks worth, and I took it really religiously and it just kept getting worse and worse. It was so painful to the point where I did start getting really extreme chills and I was feeling so sick every night. I like could not even like, leave my house and it was such a bummer too because obviously I was studying abroad and I was just in pain for a couple weeks. So finally at a certain point, I was like, okay, I really need to talk to a doctor. So finally went to the doctor and they were like, why didn't you come in earlier? This is really bad. It's potentially spreading to your kidneys. They said it was like almost a kidney infection pretty much. They put me on some extremely potent antibiotics, which thankfully started working because they said if it didn't start working or if I'd waited one more day to go to the doctor, I would have had to be admitted to the hospital for a kidney infection. I just also remember feeling so bad because at the time I had three roommates in a, in a very small, small apartment in Florence. So you could just hear everything. And I was just crying every night, writhing around in pain and just keeping everybody up. So it was just a terrible situation all in all. So what I'm saying is do not ignore the symptoms of a UTI, you really need to treat it head on because if you don't, it could be potentially life-threatening. UTIs are caused by bacteria making its way into your urethra, which is the tube that transports urine from your bladder to the outside world. So this is why we are told to wipe from front to back because when you go number two, you don't want that bacteria going anywhere near your urethra. So here's some factors that can increase the likelihood of UTIs. Number one is sex. When you have sex with somebody, their bacteria is being introduced into your body. I don't know why I clap like that. Their body is coming into contact with yours. So that means that their bacteria is coming into contact with your body. So this is a huge reason why women are told to urinate 
after having sex, it is so important because you are cleaning out the urethra and hopefully kind of washing away any new bacteria from them that is introduced. I have definitely gotten UTIs after having sex and just forgetting to go pee. I'm not sure if this is the most common cause of UTIs, but it's definitely the one that I hear about the most when I have conversations with other women. It's definitely happened to me and it is very preventable. Just make sure to pee after you have sex. We touched upon this a little bit before, but poor personal hygiene is definitely a factor in UTIs. Just make sure to wipe from front to back. If you're traveling a lot, you know, and you know you're prone to UTIs, maybe try and bring wipes with you if you're on the go. It's just important to keep everything clean. This next one is definitely one that has affected me and that is the use of spermicides. Now, I don't know anybody these days who uses a spermicidal foam or cream, but there are definitely still spermicidal condoms on the market and I am so baffled. I don't understand how this is still a thing. It has been scientifically proven time and time again that spermicides are not an effective form of birth control does not effectively kill sperm. What it does do is kill the good bacteria inside the vagina and it just lets infection run rampant. In terms of my personal story with this, I had a partner, we were using condoms, but I wasn't paying attention to what kind of condoms. And over the course of like a couple months, I got two UTIs. It was just really strange because I've never gotten like back to back kind of UTIs like that. And I was like, what is going on with my body? You know, I don't exactly remember how I figured it out at the time. I do remember knowing that spermicides were not effective and it was a very outdated thing. So I thought it was really strange that this person was buying spermicidal condoms. Cause I was like, that's not necessary. And I just never seen them before in my life. So I remember just doing some research on it and then figuring out that was the cause of me getting two UTIs in a row. I was not very happy to say the least, but you know, it wasn't this person's fault. He didn't know. I ended up educating him on the whole situation and we moved on from there, but I will never get another UTI from any spermicidal anything and neither should you. Some other factors that can increase the likelihood of a UTI are heavy use of antibiotics because you're disrupting the natural flora of the urinary system, um, dehydration, if you're not drinking enough water, you're not flushing out the urinary system, wearing tight clothes, because obviously that can contribute to bacterial growth. And also women who have shorter urethras tend to have more frequent UTIs because bacteria can travel up the tube easier. So yeah, those are some causes. Those are not all the causes of a UTI, but some pretty common ones. So now let's roll into the treatment. I feel like the treatment of UTIs is quite controversial. I'm sure a lot of y'all are gonna have a lot of mixed feelings about these things I'm about to say. <laughs> um, but this comes from studies I found online as well as my personal experience. Um, so the number one thing that a doctor can do for you in terms of treating a UTI is prescribe you antibiotics. In terms of a very uncomplicated UTI, symptoms can clear up in two to three days. If it's more extensive, like the one that I had before, it can take from seven to 14 days for the antibiotics to completely clear out the infection. Obviously, UTIs have been around way longer than antibiotics and not every infection developed into a kidney infection which led to death. I found a few studies online and I'm gonna try and explain this as well as I can. I don't know why this is hard for me to explain, but in countries where people use antibiotics less for other mild infections like ear infections, throat infections, respiratory issues, those people are able to not use antibiotics to heal a UTI. In countries where we do use antibiotics to treat certain things like ear infections and mild infections like that, we are more dependent on antibiotics to help us heal things in our bodies. It really is a double-edged sword because I mean, I've had an ear infection before, I've had a throat infection. I really, to be honest, couldn't imagine not using antibiotics to help me with that because it's so painful and antibiotics are so useful. But I guess maybe since I have been using it since I was a kid, I'm just dependent on antibiotics at this point. I'm not talking down on antibiotics at all. I'm just saying certain places in the world are more and less dependent on antibiotics and that's just that. So pretty much what I have for you here in terms of treatment are antibiotics because all the other home remedies that I found online, I cannot confidently say that it helps to cure a UTI. A big one that we really need to debunk is that cranberry juice 
cures UTIs. The compound within cranberry juice that is actually useful for UTIs is useful in the prevention of UTIs and not the treatment. So let's roll over into the prevention section. All right, so let's just address cranberries right off the bat. So the useful compound within cranberries are called proanthocyanidins. And this is a compound that helps to prevent E. coli from sticking to the walls of the digestive and urinary tracts. Treatment of UTIs using cranberry juice now has just been debunked over and over again. What a lot of doctors are saying is that potentially you're just hydrating more and therefore flushing out the bacteria out of your system. And also in terms of prevention, you would need to drink an extremely large concentration of cranberry juice to get enough proanthocyanidins in your system to be effective. What experts are saying now is that you can really just find them in cranberry pills, which I have in my cabinet. I honestly just take cranberry pills when I'm traveling, especially just to make sure I don't get a UTI. I'll take one like, you know, every week or a couple of times a week just to get it in there. It probably is a placebo effect, you know, for me personally, but I just like to have the security of some cranberry pills on me. I just think it's so interesting because if you were to talk to, I feel like the majority of people about UTIs and the treatment of UTIs, they would say, oh, you gotta, you gotta drink cranberry juice. Um, but that's really not the case. I just have many traumatizing memories of <laughs> chugging cranberry juice. Oh my God, that pure cranberry juice that is just so bitter and intense. And it was all for nothing. So we gotta spread the word, it's not necessary. So in terms of other preventative measures you can take outside of cranberry pills, I think a lot of them are a lot of common sense. Stay hydrated, uh, don't hold in your pee. That's a big one. If you gotta go to the bathroom, just go. We covered this before, but wipe front to back. Make sure to urinate after having intercourse. Avoid unnecessary products, like do not douche. I don't really know anybody watching this video who would be douching um, because I think a lot of people are educated on that now, but let me just tell you, it's not good for you. It's just don't do it. Don't douche. Um, you know, deodorant sprays and powders and stuff, like those things can irritate your body can irritate your urethra and lead to UTIs. This last one I'm gonna talk about really has just helped me in so many areas of my life. If you are susceptible to UTIs, try eating probiotics. Probiotics just really help to even out your gut flora and the natural flora of your urinary tract. It just helps keep that good bacteria around. I feel like I have so much more information about UTIs, but I feel like I've really handed over what I really need to tell you. If you have anything to add to this conversation, please let me know in the comments down below. You know, I'm trying to stay educated, just trying to spread information. But if you are giving something like treatments or trying to give advice on anything, please have something to back it up, like a scientific study or an article that you can share. A lot of these home remedies that you find online have absolutely nothing backing them up or they have been completely debunked and are time and time again still being said that they are effective ways of treating things like UTIs. I totally understand we have our own personal stories and experiences with things like these, but if you're gonna give some advice or anything on treatments, uh, please back it up with some you know, articles or facts and uh, stay respectful to everybody in the comments. I really hope y'all gain some information out of this and if you feel like this video might be helpful for somebody, please spread the love, share this video. I would love to get more people informed on subjects like UTIs. All right, I love y'all and I will see you in the next video. Bye.